Američka državna agencija za međunarodnu pomoć i USAID donirala je 1,2 miliona dolara Bosni i Hercegovini kao pomoć u borbi protiv koronavirusa. Novčani iznos namijenjen je bosansko-hercegovačkim laboratorijskim sistemima za aktiviranje, pronalaženje i praćenja, ali i podršku stručnjacima kao i za jačanje svijesti i uključivanje zajednice u prevenciju doba pandemije koronavirusa. Sjedinjene američke države prošle sedmice donirale su Bosni i Hercegovini medicinske potrepštine, ali i druge zalihe koje su na Sarajevskom aerodromu preuzeli pripadnici oružanih snaga Bosni i Hercegovine. Mi u nastavku o ovoj pomoći, ali i donaciji i odnosu SAD-a prema Bosni i Hercegovini govorimo s ambasadorom SAD-a u našoj zemlji, Erikom Nelsonom. Ambasador Nelson, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Dobar dan, Erika. Dobar dan. It is more than clear that the entire world is in fear of coronavirus. Europe is fighting its battle, but the United States is the new black spot at this point. How do you feel about it? Well, sadly, it's, it's, it's terrible to see the infection spreading, affecting so many countries. There's hardly a country in the world that, that, isn't, in, that isn't threatened by this, this virus. And the U.S. this week took the lead, sadly in the number of cases. Uh, it's a huge challenge for our country to rally together and take the measures necessary to reduce the spread and to also help uh, the health systems respond to, to those who are infected. Yes, if I'm not mistaken, you're at the residency at this point, home office, home office these days. Uh, how does the embassy work? So the embassy is working overtime. We're working harder than ever, but um, We're doing that in the safest way possible, and that's by doing our jobs from home. I am doing my job from home, and I'm on the phone constantly and on video meetings and on the computer, uh, on, the, on the call with leaders across Bosnia and Herzegovina, on the phone with leaders across Bosnia and Herzegovina, on the phone with Washington. Um, my whole team is doing that, as many of them as possible. We need to keep doing our work, and we need to keep ourselves and our families healthy. That's, of course, the first priority. And sheltering in place and following the instructions of, of security and health authorities is the first requirement. Yes. And how does it for you to see cities like New York, New Orleans and L.A., where all together there are more than uh, 40,000 confirmed cases and more than 1,400 dead so far? It, to many of us, it looks like scenes from a Hollywood movie. Um, sadly, it is, it is the reality. The empty streets, um, should, we should all see that as an, as an encouraging sign that people are taking this seriously and taking, doing what they can, what every citizen can to address this virus, and that is staying at home. On the other hand, we have Italy who is fighting its hardest battle. You probably have many friends there. How does that affect you? I have friends in, and family in Italy, and fortunately they're all uh, safe so far. We're in constant communication with them and um, helping, uh, uh, trying to help alleviate their, their sense of isolation. Uh, the U.S. is also responding um, to help the, the Italians in their hour of need as well. Uh, when it comes to Bosnia and Herzegovina, government uh, has reacted early and made steps towards repressing contamination, but still it is hard to see mutual reaction and cooperation. The government has reacted early. They have reacted uh, intelligently and smartly. I think that citizens are encouraged, that leaders are taking responsibility. Um, there is a, more than ever a need for good coordination, a, good, a need for focus, a need for unity. And my, I'm making constant calls to leaders across the country to reinforce that, that this is a time for the country to come together. This is not a time for partisan um, partisan priorities. This is not a time um, for um, political games. In any, in any crisis, coordination is essential for an effective response. That coordination needs to begin at the state level. That coordination is what will tell the international community what the needs are so that we can respond through the UN and also in a coordinated fashion. That coordination needs to be transparent that all citizens can see what assistance is being requested and, and met. And that coordination needs to be distributed according to needs, not according to arbitrary formulas or, or political uh, uh, um, arrangements. Um, in any crisis and in, in wars, you see, you always see people, individuals who are trying to make a profit. And profiteering 
Um, it, you already were hearing some reports in the media of people trying to take advantage, make a profit out of this, whether that's a private profit or a political profit. And sadly, those kind of efforts, they're inevitable, but they're disgraceful. And we need to work in a coordinated fashion and bring transparency so that all citizens can have confidence that that kind of profiteering is being kept to a minimum. Yes, you always accent how important it is for different levels of authority in our country to cooperate and coordinate. But do you think that this, the situation with pandemic can actually change these bad relations and bad habits also? I think it is already. You see authorities here understanding and accepting that they need to cooperate. The, uh, the joint statement from the presidency was a good signal to uh, citizens and to leaders across the country, that this is the time to come together, that we are in this together, that the virus does not respect borders, it does not respect ethnicities, it will attack anyone. And if we're not approaching this and responding in a united fashion, we will suffer. And considering the situation and the problems we deal with, corruption is one of the toughest problems we cannot seem to deal with for years. But it seems like uh, that in times like these, isn't it crucial to fight it or like to completely erase it, to, to, to disappear when it comes to corruption? I think it's more important than ever to, to take that fight seriously and to try to erase it. Because, and for people to ch shift their, their level of tolerance for, for corruption, because you can think that this is part of business as usual in this country, but the examples we're seeing now of uh, a, a border official turning the other way to let an infected person pass by, or a hospital official allowing someone to uh, skip protocols, or a procurement official allowing um, profiteering in, a, in an emergency procurement, all of those are can will cost can cost lives. So corruption is not something you can just close your eyes to. It's something that threatens people's lives. Yeah, it's unfortunately really hard for Bosnia and Herzegovina and its government to understand some things, but we hopefully, uh, we are hoping that it, it will remain on this understanding level that it is right now. Uh, despite uh, everything that we're going through for years, the United States have always been nothing but, but supportive towards our country, uh, no matter the issue. That's exactly the same right now. Well, I, I, I believe that as well. For 25 years, we have worked hard to be Bosnia and Herzegovina's best partner. For 25 years, we've, we've been working to build the capacity of institutions here to uh, build up individual citizens' capacity. We can see some of that paying off. Um, I spoke to the RS Health Minister uh, on the weekend, and he was noting how helpful are the assistance that we've given the, the uh, the Republika Srpska uh, from the Center of Disease Control, the CDC, how that has helped them be uh, respond uh, more effectively right now. So we've been working, we've been uh, determined and committed to being a good partner for years, and we are still doing that. Though we are besieged by the, the virus ourselves, we are, as you mentioned, we are moving uh, materials and, and funds to help BIH also respond. We started last week with a with an airlift from from um, the European Command of of materials that will help the armed forces respond to the crisis. We followed up yesterday with a first tranche of, of committed funds that we're directing to specifically support WHO's and UNICEF's efforts here in the country. Ambassador Nelson, considering the reputation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and its government, I have to be free and ask who controls where the where does this money United States have donated go? If I'm not wrong, it's 1.2 million million marks or dollars. Well, we are stressing how important it is that all of the assistance requests be coordinated, and the Ministry of Security plays that coordination role, so that the international community, led by the UN, I can have one one stop. Where all of the all of the requests are disclosed and all of them can be uh, treated appropriately, so that process needs to be transparent. That Trump process needs to be monitored. That's certainly the commitment of the U.S. and we're looking to the U.N. to play that important and the Ministry of Security to play that important coordinating central coordinating role. You will control. So we will we will be. 
Um, of course, our funds flow to the UN, and the UN as well is looking to the Ministry of Security to um, disclose what are the resistance requests, and all of those requests would be transparent and appropriately prioritized. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that tra transparency. Uh, I'm sure that you have message uh, for citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina, considering that we're all uh, in the same situation. We're all in the isolation and we're all at our homes. Uh, some of us are working from home. Some of us are just uh, home because they, they lost their jobs uh, in a few days ago or weeks ago. Uh, what is your message for citizens? How to handle these hard times? Um, my message to citizens is to continue to listen to the advice of, of and the instructions of security and health officials, to guard against um, disinformation. Be careful where you're getting your information. Get it from reliable sources. Get it from the World Health Organization, the WHO. Get it from the Centers for Disease Control. Don't don't um, don't follow disinformation disinformation about the the virus that's being spread. Take care of your families, take care of yourselves, protect yourselves, reach out to others who may be feeling isolated. There are many, many grandparents across the world who are feeling quite shut off from, from their families. And it's important for people to reach out and um, make an extra effort to keep those, keep those ties, even if it's just by phone or, or by video. And I, I think it's important for uh, Bosnian and Herzegovinian citizens to appreciate the resilience and adaptability that they they have as as a nation. Um, the response to the crisis so far has been admirable. The fact that people are mostly following the instructions, the pay, the fact that most people are taking the situation seriously, the community response is is important, and um, it's important for the community to also uh, ensure that all members of the community are are taking the, this seriously. So um, I think that we will all come through this. I think Bosnia and Herzegovina will come through it. In this country, success will be because citizens have come together and citizens have displayed their strength. And together with some help from the international community, we will overcome this crisis. Yes, that's for sure. And of course, thank you for your support and thank you for your time. I, can I have one thing? Of course. You know, there are a lot of people who are suffering economically, who aren't able to go to work, who have lost their jobs. And th th that's happening not only here, but uh, across the globe. And it's very important now that we begin to focus on what are going to be the economic measures, what are going to be the response that's, in, that's required to reinvigorate the economy, to help the, those who are most afflicted. We're working closely with the EU, with the UN, and with um, the uh, government officials to talk about what are those kind of stimulus uh, measures that will be appropriate, that will be needed, that will be effective, that will be transparent and not diverted. And this is a time for us to think about reforms and economic liberalization that has that this country is needed for some time, now more than ever, we need to think about moving the country forward economically as well. Ambassador, do you think regarding this question that Bosnia and Herzegovina has capacity to uh, go through this uh, when it comes to economy, to, to get through this problem, uh, to get all these people back to work? Uh, because our prime, prime minister says they didn't, uh, they were not fired, they, ju they just lost their jobs. Do you think that we have capacity to get through this? Uh, with help from with help from the international community, the IMF has already committed 165 million dollars in extraordinary financing. There, there's more assistance available in the in the future. That money, those injections need to be managed uh, wisely. The central bank does have adequate reserves. The private banks do have strong reserves. So there's a lot of there's good capacity here, which needs to be appropriately mobilized in a coordinated fashion. We sure hope they will manage to do that in the right way. Thank you very much for your time. We're leaving you now to your obligations, considering that you have said at the beginning that the embassy is working harder than ever. Thank you very much. Same to you. Thank you.